we need tracing agents in the hundreds and hundreds of people, right? You take the test and then you trace back all the contacts. It's never been done on this scale before. This is an army of tracers. They're basically investigators. Uh, we, we will do that the best we can on, with these, uh, with a seven state consortium. But it could have been done from the federal government on a much tighter, more efficient basis. You know, I agree with you on this. This contact tracing is very important and it could enable our entire country for the first time to have a real public health system, a real public health core. And uh, I've thought about it in a lot of different ways. Could we, could we make this a part of AmeriCorps and encourage people to come and do this work and earn some credits to go to college, for example? Um, is there some other way we could do it? But I, I know that uh, my friend, uh, whom you know well, Paul Farmer, uh, is heading up a program for Massachusetts now to try to get a state contact tracing core. Do you think maybe you could get uh, the governors to ask the Congress to fund that as a part of all this money they're giving you? Or maybe it's legal now to spend some of the money. But we need a national core of healthy people who are properly trained to go out and do this contact tracing. We need the bodies. And it seemed to us as though no sort of systematic or um, concerted efforts around contact tracing were taking place in Massachusetts. So um, the governor here, Governor Baker, um, invited us to be part of a consortium um, and to offer some of the insights and experience we've had in other countries in hiring and training a um, a group, really a, a, a whole cadre of community health workers um, or contact tracers, rather. I can't help but say community health workers. And they would be um, uh, virtually trained. They are being virtually uh, trained and deployed right now. What we would do with this is that we would, this virtual group of contact tracers um, would contact anybody who has tested positive to learn about their recent activities, um, who they may have been in contact with, and ensure that they can take steps to make sure that they can stay healthy and not spread the virus any further. So the partnership essentially is building on infrastructure that already exists in a place like Massachusetts. Um, and it needs to be part of a whole, um, whole system. So that includes you know, ramping up testing. It includes providing uh, really dignified isolation and treatment that, of everyone who's sick. And it's ensuring that people can be quarantined um, and at times separated in a very supportive um, way. We had something like 7,000 people, 9,000 people apply within the first couple of days to be contact tracers so that we can actually use people who are out of place, um, out of work rather, um, who can be trained, even lay people, um, to do this work. It felt like a good, good thing for the economy also. But one of the things that you have to be able to do is to track people who are positive. Where were they? Who were they in contact with? How can you hem up any recurrence of this? Uh, Massachusetts has recently announced that they're going to try to build a statewide tracking program, and they've asked partners in health to run it for them. And, they're one of my partners in the work we've done in Africa, Haiti, and other places. But where are we going to get all these contact tracers? Uh, <laughs> should we have, like, should, like you did with the, California did with the Conservation Corps of Young People, should we have a contract tracer corps, even if we call it something more elegant? Should we yeah. really build the first public health network we've ever really built in this country around this issue? Uh, I think the answer is absolutely yes, and and I, I love the Massachusetts example. We were able to learn uh, from them. We're all sharing best practices in real time. Uh, but this is an interesting point that's often not brought up. Uh, we have tracing 
capacity that predates COVID-19. It goes back to SARS, measles, TB, uh, et cetera, tracking and tracing capacity that exists in the county levels primarily uh, and increasing capacity at the state level. So what we're doing is we're building off that existing infrastructure and using the tools of technology to overlay. In addition to that, we're using AmeriCorps specifically. I uh, thank you as a champion for AmeriCorps uh, for decades. Uh, we've been able to take advantage of that workforce, obviously our conservation uh, core. What we have now is called Cal Volunteers in the spirit of Sarge Shriver. Uh, we are asking people, thousands of folks, to be part of this new core, to get trained and to help us with the tracing, because you're absolutely right. The predicate for getting back to some semblance of normalcy is our ability to identify individuals through testing, to be able to trace their contacts to isolate individuals uh, that have uh, either uh, been exposed or quarantine people that are tested positive. And that's just going to require an army of folks and the capacity of consideration from individuals to allow uh, for their privacy uh, to be impacted by that kind of acuity of attention based upon where they've been and who they talk to. And the capacity of consideration from individuals to allow uh, for their privacy uh, to be impacted by that kind of acuity of attention based upon where they've been and who they talk to. And at the moment, in most parts of the world, <clears throat> due to lockdown, most of the transmission that's actually happening in many countries now is happening in the household, at family level. In some senses, transmission has been taken off the streets and pushed back into family units. Now we need to go and look in families to find those people who may be sick and remove them and isolate.